Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to talk about some common mistakes that I see people make when they're lining and how to fix them. A couple weeks ago I made a video about beginner tattoo artist mistakes and how to fix them, and it really seemed like people liked that video, so I think I'm gonna make a series out of this to where it's more defined topics, like today's gonna to be about lining, maybe the next one will be about shading, and so on and so forth. So if you wanna see a specific topic covered in this series, feel free to comment that down below. For me, when I first started tattooing, lining was one of the most intimidating things for me to tackle, just because your lining is the foundation to your tattoo, and it's very obvious when you mess up. This is something that I've spent a lot of time trying to develop my skill in, so if you do feel incompetent when it comes to your lining, don't feel discouraged just because it really is something that you can just develop while you practice. The first and most common problem that I see people make while they're lining is they put their lines too close together. When you put your lines too close together, it may look really good when you finish tattooing, but as that tattoo heals and ages, over time those lines are gonna start to blur together and it's gonna make your design look muddy and undefined. To fix this problem, when you're designing your tattoos, you wanna design the tattoo to be a healed tattoo. And yes, detail is great in tattoos. It takes a lot of talent and skill to be able to do that, but the goal is to make a finished piece that heals on your client and ages well. I recommend trying to get a good look at healed work that you've done as much as possible. That way you're able to get a feel for what works and what doesn't when it comes to design. The older the tattoo, the better. If you have a tattoo that's only a year healed, yes, it's going to change slightly from the time that you've done it, but if you can see a tattoo that's five years old, that's great because you're able to really see how it settles and ages with the client. The second most common mistake that I see is people sketching in their lines instead of trying to do one pass lines. The goal should be to do a one pass line every single time. The benefit of one pass lines is number one, it will do less damage to the skin, which will then number two, heal better. Also, as the tattoo heals and ages, if you sketch in those lines, you're going to be able to see where you started and stopped. And if you're able to effectively pull a one pass line, it's going to completely make that line smooth when it heals. Now, I know this comes with experience and confidence, and there's a few ways to achieve that without messing up your clients. You could either practice on paper with a marker, or you can practice on practice skin just to build up your confidence. You can trace simple shapes, straight and curved lines, or just trace full designs. And every line that you do, you wanna to try to knock that line out with a single pass line. Something that really helped me with this is putting a tattoo machine on the back of a pen or a pencil, and you're able to practice like this with the weight of the tattoo machine on the back of your hand. That weight can be something that's difficult to get used to when you're first learning a tattoo, and that could be what's throwing off your lines. It doesn't matter what kind of machine you get. This is just like a $5 machine that I I bought off of Amazon when I first started tattooing and I just put the pen right into the vise and then I wrapped the grip with grip tape to thicken it up a little bit. I do have a lead pencil on this one, but you could use a brush tip marker to try to understand how pressure affects your line work as well. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Now this next mistake is when you can't complete a line all in one pass, maybe the line is too long and you have to reset your hands to try to continue that line. And when you go to continue that line, you're able to see where the line that you're trying to continue ends and where the continuation starts. You wanna be able to feather back into the line to continue it, and you can't do that just by putting the needle at the end of the previous line and just start going. The best way to describe it is the way that a plane lands on a runway. You wanna gradually feather into your line and continue the rest of it smoothly. Now this takes a lot of practice, but once you get it down, it is going to make your line work much smoother. Now the next mistake that I commonly see is either going too deep into the skin or not deep enough. Now the problem with fixing this one, again, is experience and seeing how you're work is coming back healed. If you're seeing your lines come back with big blowouts and they're not defined lines, then you're going too deep. And if your lines are coming back spotty and not full, maybe the line weight is varying as the line goes on, you're not going deep enough. Unfortunately, there really is no measure or gauge that you're able to use while you're tattooing, except for the feedback that you're getting from the vibration of the needle hitting the skin, and that's gonna tell you if you're hitting the correct depth or not. You wanna feel a consistent and smooth vibration. If it feels like the machine's trying to push back at you, you're going too deep. It should just be a smooth and consistent feeling throughout. You can also hear the consistency of the needle hitting the skin.
Now, if you're hearing or feeling any type of variation in that noise or in that vibration in your hand, you're not getting a consistent depth. Now, I've seen people recommend only hanging your needle out a specific measurement out of the tube and then riding the tube while you're lining. If you're riding the tube, this is a super easy way to get blowouts and inconsistent lines just because one spot on the skin is completely different than another. For example, the skin right here on the forearm and the skin right here in the ditch are two totally different skin types. You have to be a lot more gentle in that area than you do down here. And if you tattoo somebody's ditch the same way that you're tattooing their forearm, you're gonna blow out your lines everywhere and they're gonna look terrible. Now, a good way to practice getting consistent needle depth is getting one of these brush tip markers and practice on paper getting smooth and consistent lines. This is going to force you to understand how pressure affects your line weight. I mentioned earlier that you can attach these to the tattoo machine to practice your line weight on paper. If you don't wanna do this on paper and you have an iPad, you can either use Procreate or whatever drawing app that you have and get a pressure sensitive brush and you'll be able to practice your pressure on there. Once you're able to get consistent lines with consistent pressure, you can just move that knowledge over to tattooing, and then you have to figure out your needle depth, which is then just trial and error. The next mistake that I see people commonly make is not stretching the skin hard enough. You wanna be able to have the skin tight so then that way your needles are able to consistently penetrate the skin. And if your needle is consistently penetrating the skin, you're gonna have much cleaner line work. Now, depending on the area of the body, I will stretch in a couple different ways. If it's an area that's wider and I have some more room, I'll at the same time put both of my palms down first and stretch out. And as I'm doing that, my thumb and my middle finger are stretching the skin up and down. Now I'll keep this pressure throughout the entire line. If I start to lose the pressure for some reason, I stop, reset, and feather back into the line that I was pulling. Sometimes for smaller areas like a wrist or an ankle, I'm only able to really get a good plant with my tattooing hand, and then with my stretching hand, I'm only able to use my fingers to stretch. Since every client's skin is different, tattooing really is about adapting to each individual situation. Now the last most common mistake that I have on this list is some people will complain that they're not able to get clean lines, but they've never actually really considered that they might not be using the right machine for the job. A machine with a longer stroke is gonna be much easier to pull clean lines with opposed to a machine with a shorter stroke. The stroke measurement is how much the needle travels up and down. The longer the stroke, the harder hitting. The shorter the stroke, the softer hitting. Yes, you can pull a line with a short or a long stroke machine, but a long stroke machine will make it easier. The stroke that I prefer for lining is usually a 4.2 millimeter stroke machine. I do have machines that have longer strokes than that, and I do use them occasionally, like the Bishop Wand Liner. That's a five millimeter stroke. That's a very powerful machine. And unless you really know what you're doing, you really shouldn't be using machines machines that are that powerful anyway. The shorter strokes are just better for shading because they have a softer hit. And once again, just like you're able to line with a short stroke machine, you can also shade with a longer stroke machine. It really is all up to how you tattoo. So that's all I've got for that. There are a lot of other technical issues, I guess, that you can say when it comes to lining that people have issues with. Uh, I would just say that these are the most simple and easy to be corrected and the most common that people struggle with because these are the ones that I struggle with the most as well. But like I said, don't get discouraged continue to practice and you really will be able to build your skill. So if you have any mistakes that you would like me to see kind of explain and how to fix them, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thank you for watching. I hope that you have a good day.